bunch of young men came into the library to ask me about something, and I said, oh, it's over here. And one of the, the young men said, do you know where everything is in the library? And I thought, oh, this is a teachable moment. So I said, well, pretty much. And I said, you know, information is power. If you know how to find information, you can do just about anything in the world you want to do and be anything you want to be. And one of them said, well, why are you a librarian? <laughs> and I said, because I love it and I love the kids. So that was the, it was a fun moment. <laughs> My entry into life period, it seems like it's been very random and coincidental. Um, I remember going down to the university with my dad and my dad saying, you should enroll in teacher's college. I always knew I wanted to work with people and I still feel that. I mean, I have that as kind of the, the core of the mission inside of me. But being a teacher was never you know, out there like I'm gonna do that. I do remember as a child playing school with the neighbor kids and my little sister and uh, doing that sort of thing. But uh, it just kind of evolved. When I was in college, the um, library part actually was my minor. I probably have the oldest media endorsement in the district because I graduated from the university in 1974. And one of the courses, we typed catalog cards, which, you know, a lot of kids have no concept of what a catalog card is. I had been an English teacher at first. That was my major in college. And I taught here at East for six or seven years from that. I, and during that time, I also was the coordinator for the gifted program, which was brand new to public schools. I believe federal law was passed, and they were informed that they had to have a gifted program. Um, then I happened to have an office in the counseling area, and so I easily transitioned into counseling, and I did counseling for several years. I was out of education for a long time because of my having children. I have four, and um, we also moved out of state for about eight or nine years. So at that time, I stayed at home with my children. When I returned to Lincoln, I spent a year subbing, and then uh, I applied for a job, and I listed my credentials. The media was lo the last one, but there was an opening at East. And interestingly enough, you know, I knew enough people, I think they knew my skills working with kids, that they said, you know, give her an opportunity to interview, and I did get hired. So <laughs> I had a very, very uh, large learning curve because it had transformed from 1974 to 1998 when I started. So um, I took every technology class I could think of at that time. And of course, I've learned on the job too. And I had wonderful, wonderful colleagues that here in the library that helped me along. My dad, once again, would take me to the library at least once a week when I was a kid. And I can still smell that library. It's I, it, it's in my brain embedded, and I have always, always loved to read. So that was one of the reasons I decided that media would be my minor, not because I wanted to type catalog cards, but because I love books, and I love to read. I love the stories. You know, it was an opportunity to go beyond the realm of my own existence into so many others, and so it was a great experience. And as I became a teacher, I loved sharing what I knew about books with kids and helping them grow in that aspect too. When I was teaching, we didn't come to the library. <laughs> I don't remember coming to the library except for maybe we had a, a room we used for a career, a career education was a component of 10th grade English in those days. And that was our experience in the library. It might have been on occasion that I would send a kid to go look for a book, but classes in the library, not so much. When I started the job as a librarian here, though, it was I was very fortunate because the um, ninth grade teachers were, they weren't officially teaming, but they did have sort of cooperative uh, venture going where the social studies and English teachers embraced the concept of a library tour, and then they were doing various kinds of research to supplement their education and so or their curriculum. And um, 
So they would bring their kids up frequently. And so it was just a great evolution. And also the program, and I have to credit the district for that, they've been progressive in terms of saying collaboration is key. So I worked really hard at trying to collaborate with every department in uh, the school, and sometimes more successful than not. And sometimes curriculum took away some of the opportunities we had early on. So nowadays, there are some groups that I don't see that I used to see frequently, and other groups are here instead. But um, a lot of kids in the library often, and technology has increased that. There are times when we could have three classes going in the library, in the lab, and um, that means like 90 to 100 kids. I love historical fiction. That's my very favorite. Um, some nonfiction is just as exciting, so uh, I can't really say one in particular. I love the Poisonwood Bible, and um, so I'd say that's one of the top. And then, of course, the, um, all, the, all the things you cannot see, or I can't even think of the title right now. It's the number one book and the Pulitzer Prize winner. Um, that was a great book as well. I think um, some things are just innate, and one of the things that's very important to me in education is, is inclusion, and that is everybody feels they're a part of it. And I think kids in general can feel separated quite easily. So the library is a haven of, uh, of a refuge, so to speak, for a lot of kids. and. I feel that's important. Also, in terms of collaboration, you have to have relationships. And hopefully it's just genuinely who I am because I feel like I make relationships outside of school too and I cherish those things. Those are the most important part of my life.